I just got done shooting an entire wedding on nothing but my cell phone. Let's talk about it. Okay, so first things first, some disclosures. Sony did send me this phone to review, but I'm not being paid to make this video and they don't get any input in what I'm going to say and they don't even get to review the video before I post it. With that said, when I first got this phone, obviously the camera is gonna be my main focus, but I didn't want the review to be the same as like other reviewers when they look at cell phones. So I didn't wanna be taking images of my backyard or of my food. I wanted to know what this phone could do in unpredictable and a professional environment. And being that I'm a wedding photographer, I thought shooting a wedding would be a pretty dang good test. But I didn't want this experiment to turn into me grabbing ideal moments in ideal lighting conditions throughout a wedding day. So instead of simply adding the phone to my camera bag, I wanted the phone to be the one and only camera I used for the entire day, from wedding prep all the way through the end of the night. The idea here is that as I'm presented with tricky situations, I don't wanna have my better camera to fall back on. Now, it should be expected that I could grab a few decent images here and there throughout an entire day, but for this phone to truly pass the test, I need to be able to get enough great images that I could tell the full story of the day because really that's what wedding photography is all about. But I obviously couldn't expect a paying client to let me perform this experiment on their wedding. So what I did is I reached out to some friends and Z Anna Photography was gracious enough to let me second shoot with them for a full day out in Florida. And I made sure that her and the couple had complete understanding of exactly what I was going to be doing. So. With all that said, let's talk a bit about the phone. For this project, I use the new Xperia Pro I. Not to be confused with the Xperia One because the I in the Pro I stands for imaging. That's because this phone has the same one inch sensor that their high end point and shoot camera has. And this sensor is tied to a 24 millimeter Zeiss lens. But there is a bit of a quirk about this setup because the way the lens is set up is it doesn't actually use the full size of the sensor, which at the beginning, felt sort of like a gimmick spec to me because why have a larger sensor if you aren't going to use the entire thing? But when I asked about this, it actually makes sense. You see, the large sensor isn't being used for the size of the sensor, but actually for the size of the pixels. This is known as pixel pitch, and a similar comparison would be the difference between something like the A7S line of cameras and the A7R. While they have the same sensor size, the 12 megapixel sensor on the A7S camera has a larger pixel pitch. This is how they get you better light gathering ability on the A7S. Now keep in mind that these details are for the main camera. The phone also has two additional cameras that use more traditional sensor and lens combos on the back. So what you get are normal cell phone style cameras in the 16 millimeter and 50 millimeter focal range, and then the better lens, better sensor combo for the 24 millimeter range. Okay, so that's kind of the main draw when it comes to this camera phone. And I don't wanna to get too deep into the tech trenches for this video, but I do wanna to touch on a handful more features that make this phone different. For one, the 24 millimeter lens that's tied to the main sensor is actually a glass lens where most camera phones use plastic. And I actually think that this is the one and only camera phone with a glass lens. Uh, it also has an adjustable mechanical aperture, so you can go from f2 to f4, but again, this is only for the main camera. From there, the phone has a dedicated Bion's X image processor, similar to all their other dedicated cameras. Uh, it has real-time autofocus tracking IAF for both humans and animals, and it can even shoot at 20 frames per second. Though when you shoot at 20 frames per second, you can only get a JPEG for your file output. If you wanna shoot raw, you could only do that with single shot mode, which was a little disappointing. The phone also has a physical shutter button with a familiar half press to focus ability, similar to what you would expect with any sort of dedicated camera. And if you already shoot Sony, then the camera app will feel like home with a very similar layout and menu setup. You can shoot an auto, program, shutter priority, manual, and even a memory recall mode. And although these modes are all really nice to have, a feature I missed having is the ability to set a minimum shutter speed when shooting auto ISO. It's one of the main ways I shoot with my professional camera. 
So it would have been a easier transition had that mode been included. So with some of the technical aspects out of the way, how did using it on an actual wedding go? The first thing that I wanna bring up is that I was pleasantly surprised that I got no strange looks from guests and no questions as to why I was shooting on my cell phone. And I will say that it was very clear that I was a working photographer and not just a guest shooting on my phone. I had my camera bag, a GoPro mounted to my shoulder, and I was pretty much shooting the entire time. So this just goes to show that you don't need the big giant lens and updated camera body simply for how a client will perceive you, at least in the world of wedding. As for the actual shooting aspect, we started the day off obviously with wedding prep and this is normally a part of the day that I like to play around with my lighting. So I ended up using my Stella Pro Reflex S in constant mode and I played around with this for basically the entire time that the bride was getting her makeup done, but I ended up putting the light away as the second shooter working with a lead photographer and a video team, I didn't want to subject my lighting choices to everyone else working. So once things started moving around the room, I decided to go with natural light for the rest of the day, except for the reception, which we will get into in just a little bit. From here, the ceremony went pretty normal. I did what most second shooters will do. I wandered around the ceremony trying to find interesting light or composition while also trying to stay out of the way. Although this did end up being one of the most difficult times to shoot. The screen on this phone is actually very usable in bright sunlight, but when you try and tilt the phone or shoot at an awkward angle, the reflection off the glossy screen can be a little hard to see at times. Really, this is similar to when using the flip out screen on something like my Sony A9, although the screen on my A9 is less glossy, so it shows fewer reflections. When it came to portrait time here, I would normally use some type of flash. Uh, I really love adding my own light to accentuate a scene, add drama, or even completely change a scene entirely. But as I was prepping for this wedding, I found out I couldn't use flash the way I thought I could. You see, I planned on linking my phone to the Flashpoint M1 mobile flash unit, which would then allow me to pair up with some of my bigger lights. But unfortunately, while I could connect to the trigger and I could even fire the lights with the test button within the app, the app didn't actually support the phone yet. So I couldn't open the camera from within the app. So I was at a loss. Uh, because of this, I actually got the idea to bring a strong ND filter with the hopes of going to like a, a super low shutter speed so that I can manually trigger the flash with like the test button on the trigger. But like most wedding day timelines, things ran a bit late so I didn't have the chance to play around with this. So I simply shot where I could and directed when given the chance. From here, as portraits were coming to an end, the sun went down and things did get a bit more difficult. While I could normally rely on a higher ISO capability of my Sony A9 or do some type of like off-camera flash lighting, uh, instead I had to just make do with what I had. Though because I was shooting on a phone, I did try my best to stick to lower ISO ranges, which was fairly easy throughout the day, though as soon as the reception started, I did have to raise my ISO. The highest I ended up having to go was ISO 640, but there were times where I would have liked to have gone to a higher ISO, but instead I ended up shooting with a lower shutter speed and then I just overshot a bit so that I can make sure to get something sharp within that moment. Except for when it came to the first dance. Here I did wanna make sure that I had some type of lighting that I could use for this first dance. And so I checked with the lead photographer and the video team to see if I could place a single light on the dance floor, which neither of them cared at all. So I was able to use the exact same lighting setup that I use for all of my first dances. This setup is actually just a single light placed behind the couple. Um, this gives me a nice rim light for the couple as well as some good bounce light to fill in some of their faces. Um, and again, this situation, I use the Stella Pro Reflex S in constant mode. And for this particular setup, I had the light set to 2000 lumens, which is about one third the power if you're working off the battery. Now, when the lights went lower for the party dancing, things did get even more difficult. For a little while, I was able to use the video team's uh, lighting setup, but when they ended up turning that off, I had to resort to waiting for the DJ lights to line up with something on the dance floor. Uh, but because the DJ lights are constantly moving all over the place, things really had a hard time falling into place. When the lighting was really good, it didn't seem like there was anything happening on the dance floor. And when there was a ton of stuff happening on the dance floor, the DJ lights would be like, pointing up at a ceiling or something. 
Once the wedding was over, it was time to jump into Capture One, and most photographers will be happy to hear that the files off of this phone are actually 12-bit RAW files. So there is a fair amount of color grading that you can do without any sort of weird artifacting or blotchiness and stuff like that. When it comes to dynamic range, there actually is a fair amount of highlight detail that you can recover. Here we have an image of the bride having an emotional moment out on the balcony, um, and I underexposed a little bit trying to save the highlights, but I could have actually underexposed a little bit more if we turn on the clipping mask, you'll see that there is a fair amount of blown highlights here. But once we actually apply an edit and some highlight recovery, there is a fair amount of detail that is recovered from these highlights. You'll see there's a little bit here where the sun's coming in but for the most part, everything is pretty well under control. And the same could be said for recovering shadows. So here I did a little bit better of a job of saving some of my highlights. If we turn on the clipping mask, you'll see that the sun is right back here. So obviously I'm not going to be able to completely get rid of all of these blown highlights. But you know, once we actually apply an edit to this, we are able to recover a good amount of shadow detail and get a very wide dynamic range image off of these cell phone files. When it came to shooting in lower light situations, here for the first dance, I actually raised my eyes ISO to ISO 500 and then I was shooting at 1 50th of a second. If we zoom in a little bit here you'll see that there is a decent amount of noise here on the skin and here in the shadow detail um, up on this tent but here I have completely zeroed out all of the noise reduction. So if we go to somewhere where I was actually able to turn up the noise reduction, uh, the file then becomes very usable. That said, the previous file was off of the better sensor on the 24 millimeter lens. For this image, I'm using the more traditional cell phone sensor. And if we zoom in here with no noise reduction, there is quite a bit more noise on the skin. And if we come up here and show some of the shadow detail, there is quite a bit more noise with some noise reduction this file becomes more usable but it's not quite as good as the better sensor for the 24 millimeter lens next we can talk about the actual use for some of these files the main deliverable for a lot of our weddings is actually a wedding album and so here we are in fundy designer um, and i have a 12 by 12 album design and just have some basic spreads lined out and everything's looking pretty good except for this one right here you'll see that it gives me a little bit of a warning um, and what that is saying is that basically the 12 megapixel file off of this phone doesn't give me enough resolution to do a full page spread on a 12 by 12. And if I change it to a 10 by 10, you'll see that the 12 megapixel files still aren't large enough to give me a full page spread. When we jump into actually creating prints for the wall, you'll see that we're able to create some nice smaller prints. But once we get into the larger pieces of artwork, this one is a 45 by 30. Um, it's telling me that I'm going to have to upsize 237 percent uh, just in order to get this 12 meg megapixel file onto this large of a canvas. If we go over here, um, you can see that I can actually get a 16 by 12, which is the native aspect ratio for the files coming off of this phone. Uh, if I go up a size to a 20 by 15, I then get the warning. Um, and so this is kind of where that limitation falls as far as print sizing. Now, at the end of the day, I was able to make a similar style slideshow that I make for all of our couples, and it shows key moments for the entire day, and I'm quite proud of the images I was able to include. I don't feel like I had to you know, search for filler images or leave out certain moments because I wasn't able to capture them well. So aside from the fact that I would have normally included some groom prep, but he was in a different location and I never got the access to actually go document what he was doing. Also, I would have normally included a few more reception images, but given the circumstances, I'm pretty happy with what I was able to walk away with. Now, I would never suggest any of you all trade in your professional cameras and start shooting full time on your phone. Although in a pinch, I do think someone could get by with this. But mostly this is just a testament that this makes for a great everyday carry in your pocket type camera. This camera has features like full manual control, AF tracking, a better sensor and better glass. And these are things you would normally only be able to find in a dedicated camera. So add in the fact that it has a phone included and that's a pretty big win in my book. Because if I can take professional and deliverable wedding images on a phone, then surely it's enough to document everyday life. Lastly, if you'd like to see more images from this wedding, there will be a link to that in the description as well. Now, if you have any questions or thoughts, definitely drop them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to like and comment because it really does help the channel. And if you're interested in checking out the gear I mentioned in this video, you can also find links to them in the description below. There you can also find a link to my Instagram. I'd love for you to follow me along over there as well as here on Sharpen. So until the next video, I'm out of here.